a lot of these electric vehicle um, plants are opening up in states where unionization is uh, unionizing is hard to do. Yeah. So my story actually specifically looks at a plant in Illinois for this reason. It looks at the new Rivian truck facility in electric trucks um, in normal Illinois. There is the, and, and, and workers want to unionize Rivian. There's an organizing drive. It's not clear that it's especially promising. Uh, and, and, and part of the reason that Democrats in the couple of blue states that have gotten big new investments, and there, there are several, I mean, there's production in Ohio and Illinois and a number of parts of the Midwest. Part of the reason that Democrat politicians, even like Pritzker, who's been fairly pro-union, um, have been unwilling to come out and go to bat for these union drives is this dynamic where they're scared that companies will leave for the non-union South. So it's this, it's this gotcha where if you raise worker standards too much in the North, um, uh, companies are out of there, which, which is why these kinds of negotiations should be done at a federal level. For workers, if states are competing for the cheapest workforce, it's it's a race to the bottom. J just to talk quickly about, b b before you come back, um, I just want to say there's an interesting dynamic where I think it's now pretty well known that Tesla, which was, of course, not Elon Musk's baby created, you know, out of the sea foam, but uh, w was created by Ob the Obama administration's big investment in uh, in green energy um, in 2008. That's now the biggest non-union U.S. automaker. And I think people know that um, obviously there are a number of major non-union automakers uh, that are going to be receiving subsidies from the Inflation Reduction Act. What's crazy to me is that even at the big three union automakers, so that's Ford, Stellantis, Chrysler, and GM, these new investments that they're going to be getting might not create good jobs or even union jobs. So the, the backstory there is that after the Great Recession, United Auto Workers took huge concessions and they agreed that newly hired workers could be paid half the union sa salary, reducing their wages from $28 an hour to just $14 an hour. They created this second tier of workers uh, that are paid less. And that and, and, and OK, you could argue that that makes some sense at the time when unions were bargaining from a position of weakness. It was controversial at the time. What's really outrageous is that now as taxpayer dollars are pouring into these factories in order to bring jobs back on shore and auto auto workers should be bargaining from a position of strength, more lower tier jobs are being created rather than fixing that problem of the past decade and bringing everyone up to the same tier. And just as a final point, these, these three union automakers where every new shop is supposed to be union, they've actually found a loophole to be able to add non-union shops, which is that with these new battery producers that they're creating, these new um, battery plants, they're structuring them as joint venture companies. So, so uh, companies shared with some battery producer like, uh, like Korean LG. Um, and then they say, oh, because it's a joint venture with a non-union company, they don't have to be union. So there's a big battle ahead that actually is just kicking off uh, this week over whether those new battery plants are going to be unionized at all. Where does that battle take place? I mean, if they're getting subsidies from the U.S. government, I, I guess presumably from yeah. Treasury or or from like, I mean, wh like wh who, how does that, yeah. who polices that? I mean, because obviously the 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 standard in terms of like if if there was an opportunity and and, and I wonder if it if there okay uh, let me just s slow down the legislatively there could have been tighter sort of like requirements associated with this funding can there be retroactively uh, unilateral um, I guess, creation of these standards from the president, from the executive office, A, and then B, who is, who does the policing of this? Great. So um, two levels of the answer. There's like hard power, soft power. Hard power would be writing into every contract. And yeah, you're right. It's treasury. It's also the Department of Energy is giving manufacturing credits and, and just um, manufacturing loans to these big producers the way they did with Tesla. Um, what, one thing would be for the Department of Energy to say, any company that takes this loan um, uh, has to allow card check unionization or like unionization strategies that um, uh, that give give workers a fair shot at, at unionizing in a really low, low union density sector. American labor law is pretty anti-union though. And so um, uh, in the past, sometimes um, 
uh, those efforts at the federal level have been challenged in the courts. But what um, the Biden administration could certainly do is something that actually United Auto Workers are calling on them to do just this week, which is negotiate directly with companies um, uh, for labor standards. I'll give you an example. So the battery maker um, Ultium Cells, which got a $2.5 billion loan from the Department of Energy, is not recognizing the majority of workers who have signed cards there authorizing United Auto Workers to represent them. UAW originally tried to get card check unionization before they even started, but um, but the company ignored them. And um, uh, the, and UAW just announced that they're going to file for a union election through the NLRB process, which could be slower and costlier. Um, and so uh, the Biden administration co could come out there and say, we're handing you this multi-billion dollar loan of taxpayer money and could privately put uh, put pressure on the company. And, and by the way, the company that's probably expecting more subsidies down the line. And then one other example, if I could give it to you, is is Hyundai, which is currently caught in a child labor scandal. So Hyundai has been caught at not once, but several times using um, uh, using child laborers as, lo as, as young as 12 years old. Um, and, uh, and, and simultaneously, Hyundai is lobbying uh, the Biden administration to get earlier access to these subsidies. They don't have an EV plant in the US up and running yet. And um, and the uh, the requirement, um, sorry, the, the the new EV subsidies require cars to be uh, they're by American standards. They need to be made domestically. So Hyundai's like, we don't have our EV plant up and running here yet, but let us. But we're a major trade partner. Let us get access to those subsidies. So on the one hand, they're asking for something from the Biden administration: earlier access to subsidies. On the other hand, they're embarrassed and they've just been caught in an outrageous child labor scandal. So UAW has said to the Biden administration, use this opportunity to say, Hyundai, raise your uh, standards for workers and, for, for instance, give workers an opportunity for card check unionization or any number of other measures that could get them closer to a union. The Biden administration has been silent on it. So I think it's a it's a, it's a pretty um, uh, disappointing sign uh, in this broader question that I think is going to unfold over the next couple of years of whether green manufacturing as it's onshore is actually going to bring, you know, create good jobs for Americans.